Hello viewers and welcome to a very special video production from Cardboard of the Rings, a bi-weekly podcast about the Lord of the Rings, the card game, which is a living card game by Fantasy Flight Games. This is Mitch, whom you probably recognize as one of the regular co-hosts of Cardboard of the Rings, and joining me today is going to be Matthew D. And what we're going to do today is the first video in a new series that's going to be called uh, the LCG Progression Series. And what the goal of this uh, series of videos is going to be is starting with the core set, we're going to be working our way through all of the different releases in LOTR LCG so far, and we're going to be restricting ourselves or confining ourselves to a card pool uh, for the set that is currently released. So for these very first three videos, we're going to be playing through the core set scenarios using only the player cards from the core set. We're going to be allowing our to use up to three copies of any of those cards, as I believe Matthew and I uh, and myself both have co purchased three copies of the core set. Uh, I've got mine all sleeved up and uh, in a box in my closet. But uh, for this first video, I'm going to be using a leadership and spirit deck. I'll talk about my deck in just a second. Matthew's going to talk about his deck shortly after that. Uh, but to kick things off, Matthew, why don't you go ahead and tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and how you and I came to know one another. Sure. I'm Matthew, and I have listened to Cardboard of the Rings from the very beginning. In fact, I was listening before I even owned my three core sets. Um, Mitch and I, I guess, just started chatting once the Cardboard of the Rings Facebook page got going. And we played a bunch of different games. Brandon and I have played a few games as well. So a uh, long time listener, first time video maker. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Sure. So I thought Matthew would be a, a good candidate to do this series with me. He and I are on pretty similar time schedules. Uh, we've played plenty of games online. We've played Summoner Wars, Orcs Must Die 2, lots of LOTR LCG over uh, OCTGN. He and I are both huge fans of the X-Wing Miniatures game. Uh, so I guess we'll kick things off by starting about uh, talking about our first couple of decks here. So these might change dramatically as the, you know each video comes out, our card pool gets different, sometimes we'll swap heroes, sometimes we'll swap decks, sometimes our decks might undergo a huge revision. Uh, but for this very first deck, why don't I go ahead and bring my deck list up now. So as you can see, I'm going to be using Aragorn, Eowyn, and Theodred. And my thoughts here are I want Spirit for Unexpected Courage and uh, the cancellation effects, like getting rid of shadow effects, getting rid of win revealed effects. Eowyn is a very strong quester. Aragorn and Theodred have a little bit of natural synergy to make sure that Aragorn gets a lot of additional actions. I've got some beefy allies like Faramir who's got excellent questing power. Gandalf is of course a powerhouse. Uh, some allies that don't see too much play in the modern uh, formats like Wandering Took, Son of Arnor, Snowborn Scout, Silverlord Archer, uh, but Northern Tracker is of course an absolutely stellar character in the first, you know, series of adventure packs and especially the core set to just uh, sweep locations out of the staging area. I've got those cancellation events, like I said, some leadership events like Grim Resolve for some action advantage, Valiant Sacrifice for card advantage, Galadrim's Greeting to drop threat, Sneak Attack to uh, combo perfectly with Gandalf, and then some attachments like Calabrian Stone in favor of the Lady to make uh, Eowyn and Aragorn even stronger questers, Steward of the Gondor for just maximum resource acceleration, and uh, all in all it should work out pretty well. And Matthew, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your deck? Sure. Since Mitch took leadership in spirit, I decided to take uh, tactics and lore, so my heroes are Gimli and Legolas, and for lore I've got Barahor. Um, allies, again, corsets a little limited in what we have, but Gandalf, of course, I think he's a staple in most decks. For, uh, tactics, I've got Veteran Axe Hand, Dondorian Spearman, the Horseback Archer, and then my lower, uh, allies are Cleowine, Minor of the Iron Hills, and Erebor Hammersmith. My events, mostly tactics events, Blade Mastery Feint, Quick Strike, and Swift Strike to sort of, uh, dispose of any baddies that may come our way, and then Lorien's Wealth for a little bit of card draw in addition to Barahor's um, ability. And then for my attachments, again, mostly tactics. Blade of Gondolin for Legolas, Citadel Plate for Gimli, Gorgon Axe for Gimli, Horn of Gondor will probably go on Barahor to help me generate some more resources to pay for the somewhat expensive lore cards, and then finally for a Snare to take care of any baddies that might be kind of scary. 
Sure, should be good. Uh, something to keep in mind is especially in the second scenario, so long as I'm the first player, uh, because Theodrid can, Theodrid can pass resources along to any character, um, it would be great to toss those to Barivor to make sure we can get that second round for a snare. But I think at this point, are we ready to go ahead and start our game, Matthew? Indeed. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start things off by shuffling our decks and drawing up to six cards before we see what the encounter deck is going to bring against us. Okay, my starting threat is 30. I've already set that. And I'm pretty happy with my starting hand, I guess. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, mine's not bad. I think I'll keep it. Okay, so I guess with that done, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our encounter deck. So I've got all the different quest cards laid out here on the table, phases one through both uh, versions of three. And the way that we're going to do this is once we get to phase three, presuming that we don't lose the quest, we're just going to do a little bit of a coin flip, and that'll determine whether we take the... Uh, what is it, the Don't Leave the Path, or the Bjorn's Path. So we're going to go ahead and start on 1A, Flies and Spiders, right here. So we have to search the encounter deck for one copy of the Forest Spider, and one copy of the Old Forest Road. So why don't I go ahead and look at those now. And I'm going to pull out a copy of Forest Spider here, and Old Forest Road right there. So, memories, memories. <laughs> but uh looks like we're ready to get things started. Before we started shooting the video, I think we agreed that I'm going to be first player. So why don't we go ahead and start our resource phase. So, Matthew, I actually noticed this, but if you highlight all your heroes and hit F1, you can add a resource to all of them at one time, instead of doing it individually like I have in every other video. <laughs> We've got to draw our card... Uh, I drew yet another spirit card, and why don't I go ahead and not play anything my first turn? So why don't you go ahead and do your planning phase? Okay. Um, I actually like the card that I just uh, drew. I'm going to put uh, Horn of Gondor here on uh, Barabor. Excellent. And who are you paying that resource? Uh, sorry, for? Legolas was paying for that. And then Excellent. Uh, Legolas is going to get the Blade of Gondolin. Very nice start. Yeah. Okay. I assume that's all you're going to do? That is all I can do, yes. All right. So on to our quest phase. I'm going to go ahead and commit all of my characters for a total of seven committed to the quest. Okay. And then I will send Barabor for two. All right, perfect. And keep in mind, we're actually going to be playing with the modern-day errata for all of these cards. So, as you can see in the current errata that I've brought up on the screen, Barivor is actually going to be reading Action, Exhaust, Barivor to choose a player. That player draws two cards, just like we're used to, except she's got that clause limit once per round. So even if we're able to pile a bunch of unexpected courages on her, unfortunately, she's not going to be able to go completely balls to the wall like she she could in the original core set. So uh, for players that are just picking this game up, they'll have this limitation. So we uh, figure we might as well play to respect that. But getting back to our game, you said you're going to com uh, commit a total of two to the quest? Yep. Okay, so that's going to do a total of seven. Right now we've only got three standing against us, and why don't we go ahead and do our first turn staging. So I'm just going to make sure our encounter deck is shuffled. Card number one is going to be a Great Forest Web. So not the fiercest location in the world. Card number two is going to be the Necromancer's Reach. Gosh. And do you think that's worth canceling, or should I wait? I guess it's not really going to kill anything. No. Okay, so I guess I'll let that resolve. That'll be one damage to each character, and F3 adds points of damage to each exhausted character anyway. Oh. I guess, yeah, Gimli and Legolas don't have anything. I, I got guess. a little, uh, little head myself here. Uh, it's, let's see. I think it's F6 removes damage. Yep. yep. Okay, but it's just going to be a total of five threat against us. We're going to go ahead and make four progress on quest phase 1B, so we're already halfway there. Oh. For travel, what do we want to do? The Old Forest Road will let first player ready a character. 
in Great Forest Web, we can't travel there. Right. So do we want to go to the Old Forest Road, or what shall we do? Uh, that's, that's fine with me. Okay. So we might as well travel to Old Forest Road. As a response, I'm going to go ahead and ready Aragorn. And I suppose we'll go ahead and move to the encounter phase. So the forest spider, and I forgot to start my beginning threats of 29. And what what is your threat I start am as? 30. Okay, so the forest spider is going to be engaging with either of us this turn. Uh, let's see. You've got all the combat ability. Yep. I could definitely block it with Aragorn. Do you want to go ahead and engage the spider? Sure. Okay. So I'll have that engage with you. We can go ahead and move on to the combat phase. I'll give a shadow card to our enemy. And I'm going to go ahead and declare Aragorn as a blocker. So it's got its plus one attack strength until the end of the phase. And its shadow card is nothing. So mm -hmm. that very nasty card is gone. Nice. All right. So Aragorn is going to end up taking one damage because of his two defense. And now it's all up to you to try and kill this nasty creature. Okay, well I will send Gimli for two, and then okay. Legolas for three. All right, for total so five. it's going to be just enough to kill that creature. Nice. So it is discarded. Legolas is going to trigger... Whoops. Let me remove that. Put it on the wrong thing. So Legolas is going to trigger for two on the old forest road, and then uh, Blade of Gondolin also triggers for one which means Old Forest Road is completely explored. Fantastic. And the board is looking pretty good. Yeah. So I think that's it. Refresh. So F5, boost your threat by one. You are now first player. And we might as well add a resource and draw a card. And it's your planning. Okay, let's see. Um, not a whole lot of options so i am going to play uh the gondorian spearman and okay uh, that is it all right so for my turn i think i'm going to actually do quite a lot i'm going to strip two resources off of both of my leadership heroes for faramir whom i have not played in a long time and i'm also going to take two resources off of aon and I think I'll put Unexpected Courage on Barivor. Nice. Maybe we can dig for Steward of Gondor, or who knows. Yeah. And uh, that's all I'm doing. Cool. I'm out of resources. All right. So let's see. Uh, questing. And I think on my previous turn, I forgot to add a resource from Theodred. Mm -hmm. But, oh well. Yeah, I don't want to miss that. Uh, all right, I'm just going to send a little old Barivor. Okay. And I'm going to send all three of my characters. I will go ahead and take that resource from uh, Theodred and put it on Eowyn. That would have been very good to remember last turn, but no worries. And uh, that's all I'm going to do. So it looks like we're going to send seven. We'll have a total of nine so far. And let's do our staging. So card number one is going to be Forest Gate. Card number two... It's going to be Ungoliant Spawn. Nice. So, Yikes, minus one. that's a pretty nasty effect. I can cancel that. If I do, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five versus seven. But I could use Faramir. So if I use Faramir, I'm going to be able to give us a total of eight willpower uh, versus the seven out there, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, so I'm going to exhaust Faramir to pick myself, give each of my guys plus one. Okay. So we're going to have a total of eight willpower committed. I wanted to make sure to not exhaust him until after staging, just because I didn't want him to get hit by uh, uh, the Necromancer's Reach. So right. Ungoliant Spawn is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Indeed. But... At least we've got some defenders. Right. And you've got your spearmen. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so I guess questing is going to resolve where we'll make one progress. <laughs> Do we want to travel this turn? Uh, let's see. What are our options? 
So the forest gate will let you draw two cards, yeah. which seems pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, Great Forest Web, we still can't really go right. to. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I say we go to the road. To the forest gate. Or forest gate. Yeah, I was thinking sure. of forest so road, but yes. Go ahead gate. and draw a couple cards. Cool. Draw two, right? Say yeah. Draw two. Uh, oh, not so bad. Not so bad. Okay. Who knows? Maybe you've got a faint or something for at least a later turn. Who knows? But, uh, okay, it looks like we are going to be in counter phase. So I've only got 30 threats. Right, I'm... Do you have, what, 31? Yep. So I don't know if you want to engage in Golian Spawn now um, or later. Uh, let's wait till next turn. Okay. So uh, I guess there's not going to be any combat in that case. Mm -hmm. So that'll just bring us to our refresh well, phase. Well, before we do that, I am going to use... Um... Uh, unexpected courage. Yep, yeah, to ready bear vor and right, great. I will and then exhaust her to let you draw some cards. Cool. So I'll draw a couple cards. Uh, nothing too great, but oh well. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> At least it thins the deck. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So now we can do our refresh. But thank you very much. Yep. Okay. So let me boost up my threat, and I think you just hit thirty-two. Uh, yep. Okay. So I will now. If you make me first player, hit my green arrow. I'll draw a card. Can you and add a resource to each of my guys? Yep. All right. So this turn, I will be able to drop our threat down to buy us a little bit more time against Ungoliant Spawn. If that's useful for you, I don't know if it is or not. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Uh, then in that case, I don't think I'll play anything. Cool. I am going to put another uh, Blade of Gondolin on Legolas. Okay, cool. And that will be all that I do. Okay, so that is going to bring us to questing once again. I'll go ahead and commit my seven as per usual. I will send Barabor. Okay, so a grand total of nine... And I suppose we might as well do staging. So we get a Enchanted Stream mm -hmm. and a Mountains of Mirkwood. So another couple locations. Uh, for my Theodred, I keep forgetting. I'm going to go ahead and add that resource to Eowyn. And uh, I think that's it. Right. I'm going to go ahead and use Faramir's ability to add plus one willpower to each of my characters. That'll bring our total combined willpower to 12 versus uh, 9. So we're going to make 3 progress. Nice. Okay. And then that's going to bring us to travel, which we cannot do, mm -hmm. and encounter. So it looks like Ungoliant Spawn is going to come over to you. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. My god. <laughs> All right, so it's all you. As a total side, Combat. as a total side note, it was totally cool to hear Ungoliant Spawn mentioned in the the Hobbit movie. Right, I smiled. right. <laughs> so all those little name drops right, right. that I only knew because of this right, game. Right, exactly. I didn't know who the hell Ungoliant was before this game. Um, right. So defense. Well, my poor little spearman is going to have to take the take the attack. Okay, here. but that means Ungoliant Spawn does take one damage, yeah. no matter what. Mm -hmm. And its shadow effect is uh, attacking enemy gets plus one. So he's going to be swinging for six and absolutely crushing your ally. And thanks to the mighty hot, uh, Horn of Gondor, Barabor gets a resource. Excellent. Yeah. All right. And then now I'm going to take a mighty swing at this big fat spider. Send Gimli for two. And uh, sadly, Ungoliant Spawn is not an orc, so my blades don't add any attack, but Legolas is going to swing for three, which gives me a total of five. Okay. Are you going to use Barovor as well? Uh, I suppose I could with um, Unexpected Courage, ready her only sure. to knock her back down, to add a final two for seven. And of course with that two defense, it's going to be left with three hit points. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately it's not slain yet, not but... Quite. It's pretty close yep. to it. So one more turn. Hopefully we'll plow through it. And uh, hopefully that'll be the only time we have to deal with it this game. Yeah. 
So I guess that's combat. Shall we go ahead and move on to refresh? Sounds good. Okay, so refresh. Uh, boost your threat okay. by one. I'll make you the first player. And we'll go ahead and draw a card and do our resources. Okay. Oh, and I drew something that I'm happy to see. So it's your planning. Uh, let's see. Um, I will put a Dwarven Axe on Gimli, and that's it for me. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do quite a bit this turn. I'll take four off Eowyn for Northern Tracker. Nice. I will do one from Aragorn, one from Theodred for Steward of Gondor nice. on Eowyn. I'll exhaust the Steward, add two to Eowyn. Oh, I'm tempted to use it. I guess I'll, I'll save those resources. And that is my turn. So, nice. um, and I guess that's it, right? Cool. Yep. Okay. So, questing. Your first player. Um, Barovor. All right. So, Barovor for two. I'll do the tracker. Aragorn, uh, Eowyn, and Theodred. I'll give another resource to. Um, I guess Eowyn. Okay. So that's going to be two, six, seven, eight from me. Bring us up to 10, and staging. Okay, so staging card number one is... Oh, sorry. Let me do my northern tracker. I forgot about that. It's been so long. Yeah. But it's crazy to think that next turn, two of those locations are going to be gone. Yeah. OP! Anyway, staging card number one. Ugh. The necromancer's reach. Um, That is a lot of damage that's going to go on the table. I think I'm going to pay one from Eowyn to cancel it. Nice. I think that is my most hated... Oh, yeah, most hated, but definitely a, a top three most hated core set in Counter Card. Oh, yeah. And then card number two... Uh, <laughs> King, King Spider. Spider. So each player has to choose and exhaust one character. Oh. So I've got to do Faramir. Uh, I don't want to do that for anyone, but I guess I will do Gimli. Legolas is you think? lower damage. Oh, uh, I guess oh. that's... Well, but if we made progress... Let's see, King Spider, we're going to have to do an undefended attack here. Oh, right. King Spider, you could do an undefended attack with, like, Gimli, and he would probably live through it, and then he'd easily be able to kill Ungoliant Spawn. Yeah. Uh, we've got to figure out some way to block Ungoliant uh, Spawn, don't, though. Don't worry about that. Okay, hopefully you've got a fate. Okay, then yeah, I will exhaust Legolas, you've convinced me. Okay, cool. And we've got the unexpected courage on Barovor. That should be helpful. Oh, that's true. So, yeah. uh, let me see. So, I guess that is going to end up making two, four, six, eight versus ten. We're going to make one progress on our location, cool. getting rid of it, and one progress on the quest. And that means that we are going to be able to travel if we want. So Enchanted Stream is going to go away next turn, as is Great Forest Web. Mountains of Mirkwood, we have to reveal a card to travel there. So I'm thinking we should probably just skip traveling. Sure. Works for me. And then uh, I guess that's that yeah. for engagement. King Spider, do you want to take that sure. one? Okay. So King Spider is all yours. Combat will do, starting with first player. Highest engagement cost working its way down. Mm -hmm. How are we going to deal with these enemies this turn? Uh, dun dun dun. Faint. Faint. I assume on Ungoliant. You. Yep. All right. So it's not going to be attacking this phase. That means it does not reveal its shadow card. It just gets discarded. How do you want to deal with King Spider? Well, hope this isn't risky, but we will leave it undefended. Well, let's see. How much does the the spider needs or Ungoliant needs three more? We need to get. Right? Yeah. So I don't So Gimli's think... not enough on his own. Right. Unless he gets well, damaged. Gimli is going to be able to swing for seven with the damage that he'll take right. from the King Spider. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I'll have it undefended. Okay. So undefended. Let's hope this doesn't blow up in our yeah, face. Exactly. Uh oh. Oh, well, that's not that uh, bad. I don't want to lose any Choose and discard an attachment. I will get rid of. I'll get rid of the horn. Sure. Probably not going to go off again. Yeah. Okay, and I'll just get rid of that shadow card for simplicity's sake. And if you want to pull that faint off the table, right. 
But you've got three undefended damage to assign. All right, so it's on Gimli, son of Gimels. Mm -hmm. And now what? Um. Well, are you dying for card draw, or should I use Bear Four to maybe attack the uh, Kingspire? You certainly could. Uh, at this point, I don't really need okay. any well, cards then that's necessarily. What we will do. She'll ready with unexpected courage, and then okay. she will re-exhaust to attack the King Spider for two. All right, so King Spider is going to take one damage, yeah. and <laughs> and then Gimli will swing for a uh, let's see, total of seven. Yeah. All right, so it's going to end up taking five damage. Oops, which is going to be more than enough. So it's going to be at a total of eleven damage. So Ungoliant Spawn is going to be killed, and we've basically satisfied the victory condition for this quest. Here's the shadow card. It was just junk. That was a Merkwood. <laughs> nice. Cool. So now it's just the King Spider standing alone, and a bunch of locations. Yep. And I guess that is the round. Yep. So refresh, boost threat by one. I'll become first player, and uh, we'll draw a card and do our resources. So let's see, as first player in my planning, what do I have here? I'm looking at some of these cards I have not used in a long, yeah. long time. Uh, let's see, I could try and pull the heat off of you a little bit. Why don't I do... I'll do a Dwarven Tomb okay. to pull a Test of Will back to my hand. Nice. And I'm going to go ahead and play Galadrim's Greeting to drop your threat by six. Nice. Okay, and that is it for... Well, let's see. I'm going to pull... A son of Arnor as well, and I'm gonna go ahead and take King Spider over to my side. Oh, okay, cool, that works. And uh, go ahead and take your turn. Um, let's see. I have a few options here. Uh, I think what I will do though is play. Uh, I will simply put the uh, the Horn of Gondor back on. Baragor. All right. Yeah, that's that works. <laughs> that's my turn. Yeah, that's why I didn't mind uh, losing that one too much. Sure. Lots of copies of uniques don't do you too much good. No. Okay, so uh, shall we move on into questing? Indeed. All right. So I will do Aon and Theodred, and I'll give that resource to, I guess Theodred. Uh, and I'll do the Northern Tracker which is immediately going to get rid of two of our locations. Nice. Which is just ridiculous. And that's all for me. So I'm just going to be sending five. All right, Bearvor for the win. <laughs> two. Okay, bringing us up to seven. Yeah. And I think that's it, right? Yeah. Okay, so we only need two progress to succeed. Staging one is... Uh, King Spider. Okay. So each player choose an exhaust a character. Ugh. I could cancel that, but I don't know. Should well, should I bother? Yeah, I think I do want to do that just because I want to try and clear out a bunch of these enemies and make good quest progress with Legolas and stuff. So I'm going to cancel that when revealed effects. Okay. And next is. Dalgolder Beastmaster. So we shouldn't have to engage with it. Right. Um, and that's it. So it's going to be four, five, six. Uh, we've got seven. I'm going to exhaust Faramir to bring that up to... Well, actually, I don't need to do that. So we make two progress, and that's enough to pass on to our next quest phase. So we are now on 2B, and as soon as we defeat the stage, we'll go on to one of the two chosen path stages at random. So that's it. Cool. Travel. I don't think there's any reason for us to travel. Nope. Northern Tracker will take care of it next turn. Yep. So engagement phase. Who wants to take what? So I would be happy to take probably, well, 
should we try and get rid of the Beastmaster? I was... Let's see, Legolas can't kill it by himself. No, but I could kill a spider. Right. Right. So let's see here. If I take the Beastmaster, I could... Well, why don't we just leave the Beastmaster right, there? Right, I agree. So... You could take a spider. I could have Aragorn and my son of Arnor do the blocking. Uh, Legolas could kill the wounded spider, mm -hmm. and Gimli could kill the full HP spider. Sounds perfect. Cool. So let's go ahead and do that okay. then. So why don't I do shadow cards, starting with first player, then you. I'll do this spider versus the son of Arnor. Okay. Whoops. Shadow card is... Chief Danuftak, nothing. Nice. So, Son of Arnor is killed, which triggers a resource. Yep. Where'd uh, Barahor's horn go? I think it's it's sort of stuck behind the Oh, I see. Curve. Okay. There we go. Well, Barahor gets a resource. Looks like she's uh, yeah. putting those lore resources to good use. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> All right. And then uh, I'll have Aragorn defend against the King Spider on your side. Well, thank you, kind sir. And I don't understand why there's only one of these in the encounter deck, but whatever. No effect. Nice. So that is that, and he is going to end up taking one damage. So he's not doing so hot. But that's that. Cool. And he's exhausted. So now combat. Uh, I get to take a swing, but it's not going to matter, so I'll let you take care of All it. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, Legolas will, with using his ranged ability, will uh, attack over there. Pop that guy. Yep. Okay, so he's going to kill it immediately, and what happens is his ability is going to trigger. So after Legolas participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, place two progress tokens on the current quest. So we'll put two progress tokens on there, and at this point, I'll show you guys another little. Uh, piece from our FAQ or our errata. And this is very interesting because it's specifically talking about this case. So the FAQ is, if Legolas has a blade of Gondolin, in this case he has two, and destroys an enemy, can he trigger his response, finish off a quest card like he just did, and still place progress tokens on the next quest with the blade of Gondolin's response? And the answer is basically yes, he can, in a way that gives you as many progress tokens as possible, since these quest cards are immediately explored. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and go back to our game. We've finished finished quest phase 2b, and now we're going to go ahead and flip a coin to see which of the random 3b's we have to face. So it's going to be either, um, you know, this first card or the second one. So heads will be first, tails will be the second, and we end up getting a tails. So it's going to be this second one. So players cannot defeat the stage while Ungoliant spawn is in play. Ungoliant spawn just so happens to be in the discard pile, and if we defeat this stage, then we have won the game. So those two uh, Gondolin blades are going to trigger and put two progress tokens on this phase. Nice. And then, of course, you can do whatever you want to do to this remaining King Spider. Right, and Gimli will now take a swing with his mighty Dwarven Axe. Right, so Gimli drops it to negative three hit points, right. and the other King Spider is killed. Damn. And that's it. Yeah. So... Uh, do you want to do some card draw tricks with Barivor? Um, sure. Would you like the cards, or should I take them myself? Uh, I... You could probably take them. Alright, I'm hoping... Maybe you'll get some lore stuff. <laughs> I was gonna say. Come on, lore. And uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, That's then so refresh. Funny. Boost threat. Your first player. Draw a card. Do your resources. And I'll use my steward as ever. All right, eight resources. Good grief, and it's not like there's a, a lack of lore cards necessarily. Uh, let's see, who do I want to play? Um, I believe, well, let's see, the Beastmaster is only 35. Just for, for fun, I'll get an ally out. I'll play the horseback archer, and okay. that'll be it for me. All right. Again, yet another ally that almost never sees play. Right. Uh, for my turn, I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, oh, 
okay, I guess I can do a kind of interesting little trick this turn. I'll pay one resource for a Dwarven Tomb. I'll look at my discard pile, pull a Test of Will back into my hand, and that is all I'm going to do. So at this point, that's it. So shall we move on to questing? Sounds good. And all we've got to do is a big quest push, and we should be able to win. Right. So who are you going to commit to the quest? I'll send Bervor and Gimli. Okay, so you're going to do four. I'm going to commit all of my guys. So I will do Northern Tracker's effect, which clears Mountains of Mirkwood. So this says, after Mountains of Mirkwood leaves play, each player may search the top five cards of his deck for one card and add it to his hand, and then shuffle his deck. So to do that, you just right-click on your deck, go to look at uh, top X cards, pick five, pick one to add to your hand, and get rid of the rest. <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, there's only uh, not one lore out of all of these. Um, Good lord. Yeah, but I guess I will take that one. Alright. <laughs> Done. Okay. Do I need to shuffle my deck? Or, no, I, or really, yeah. I do. Shuffle your deck right. afterward. And then, uh, now, I guess... did you want to send Faramir, or did you want to use his ability? Yeah, I wanted to send Faramir, and I'm gonna go ahead and trigger Theodred to throw a resource on Aragorn, okay. and I'll show you what I'll do in just a sec. So I went ahead and sent 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 8, 9, 10, which brings us to 14, mm -hmm. and why don't we go ahead and do staging. So card number 1 is for a spider. Okay. Card number 2 is going to be Forest Gate. So we're going to be up against a total of six. There's an action window in between staging and quest resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and pay five uh, leadership resources for Grim Resolve. So I'm going to go ahead and ready all character cards in play. Ah. I guess I should have told you to send Legolas to, but mm. whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's gone. I'll trigger Faramir, targeting myself, and that's going to give each of my questing characters an additional plus one, which brings us to a total of 19 uh, willpower committed to the quest. And I think I'll go ahead and discard Favor of the Lady to boost Eowyn up an additional point. So we'll have 20 willpower committed versus 6, means we're going to make uh, 14 progress, and we're going to end up with 16 uh, quest tokens. Right. So, Ungoliant Spawn is not in play. We've got 16 out of the 10 progress tokens, and it looks like that's going to be the game. Woohoo! Okay, so, uh, I guess we were able to win this first scenario. Um, do you have any thoughts, Matthew, about what it was like to just use the core set against this quest? Or Well, I'll say that I had to keep looking at, to see what a lot of these cards did because it's been so long that I've, uh, since I've either played with the core set only or played these quests, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, it's not... I thought that it would be sort of bad and limiting. It would be difficult. But uh, at least for the first quest, I thought we did rather well. Yeah, I definitely think so. I think we've got a lot of powerful stuff, like Northern Tracker certainly got rid of, I think, three locations all by himself. Faramir, whom I haven't used in forever, was able to consistently bring pretty good willpower. Right. Legolas with Blades of Gondolin was great. Uh, you know, I really miss the Unexpected Courage engine on him going crazy. Barovor with the FAQ is a little bit nerfed, but Gimli always hits hard. Uh, I didn't really use Aragorn's readying effect much during this quest, but he's great. So there's still a lot of good stuff in this core set. Right. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how these decks change as time goes on. Yeah. But anything else worth adding? No, I'm just looking forward to the, uh, the series. All right. Well, I guess with that said, uh, this first scenario, Passage Through Mirkwood... I'm going to go ahead and say, as expected, was a victory on our behalf. <laughs> but uh, for those of you that watched this video through to the end, you know, thank you very much for taking a look at this video. Thank you, as always, for listening to the podcast. Go ahead and let us uh, have some feedback about what you guys think about this format, this new idea for the series. Uh, if you'd like us to try any kind of specific decks or you have any other thoughts you'd like to share, feel free to let us know in the comments below. But until next time, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much.